Hey guys, how you doing? So, somebody wrote, I've been using Clode to help me format code for my front end. It's been going on for weeks now. A scaled dev could have had it done in a day. There's a lot of loss in trying to translate human imagination into AI. And then somebody else writes, nobody cares about vibe coding anymore. Show me a model that can refactor my legacy code and I will be interested. Whenever a new LLM is released, they never show this in the demos for a good reason. Uh, somebody then writes, retirement, also known as Ruby, is death. So that's the proper comment right there. As my father once said, if you want to keep your money and do what you want, don't get married. <laughs> Lions aren't expecting any more employment after 55 and have budgeted so. Lions. Oh, he's got a lion avatar. That's why I don't know if you can see that. Vibe coding doesn't mean if you edit it manually for some reason, then make argument out of context. AI world is falling apart. So programming over 50 is a fantastic hobby or a great way to start your own project, but getting employment is a different story. Ageism in tech is notorious. No one will hire you easily. People in their 40s with 10 years experience are already having trouble finding work after being laid off. You have to balance hope with reality. Well, yeah, I can see that perhaps. Depends on the circumstances, always circumstances. You have to understand to be a great professional developer, um, you have to have more than just development skills. Bottom line is uh, vibe coding. Well, those are the comments on vibe coding. I'm not gonna go on forever on this. In terms of getting a job over 50, yeah, I can see you're not gonna go work for a startup. There's an assumption that if you're over 50, that you have a lot of experience, right? It could be a lot of experience in accounting. It could be a lot of experience in, I don't know, bookkeeping. It could be a lot of experience as a lawyer. So you can start combining skills. Something I identified back in the 90s when I had my first business, which was not tech related. We had taken technology, well, technology. We had taken a water purification resin used in the apple industry and we brought it into the aquaculture industry. Well, the pet, pet industry was more precise actually. And uh, and so this product used in the Apple industry was super, super rare. Well, it outperformed anything in my industry. And nobody thought in my industry to go look at the Apple industry to bring that tech over. So I, I was with my first experiment, experiment, experience with what I call the cross-pollinization of technologies. Taking ideas from over here and bringing them here to great advantage. That's why I always suggest that people learn multiple programming languages. When you learn Python after learning JavaScript, by learning Python, your JavaScript skills will just shoot up quite a bit, believe it or not. That is for sure, that is for sure. So to get a job these days, you have to understand that it's not just about one thing. To become a great coder, you have to become a great communicator, by the way, you have to be able to uh, succinctly and precisely communicate complex ideas. That's why a lot of uh, small and medium-sized development is localized, because meaning geographically speaking, because a large company like a Microsoft or an Apple, they can move production overseas into a, a third country and be able to set up an infrastructure to deal with the cultural nuances and the differences and the language nuances and differences. If on the other hand, uh, if you have a small business and you work with somebody from a third country, that's, eh, there's gonna be problems in terms of communications. This is like almost a cliche. I've seen people that have that problem myself. So vibe coding, back to that, it's, uh, you know, it is what it is. It has this problem, you know, the, 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 um, the shine and the, the enthusiasm of AI is now tamping down a bit. Don't confuse that with me saying uh, that AI is done, it's over, it's garbage. I'm not saying that, it's actually quite useful, but it's not like what they had presented initially, as I said when it first came out. Anyway, so there you go, that's a, this is a random video. I'm trying to pick up my video pace a little bit to um, keep you guys informed and entertained. Uh, I'll end off with this. If I thought that development was over, I would tell you I have many other interests. If you know me, I do many different things. 
I will not keep pumping something. I will not pump something that I don't think is viable. It is viable. Uh, you just have to shift from what used to be big, React, full stack, and you start shifting into what's new is AI-assisted, agentic development with full stack. So development's not going anywhere. It's just it's shifting a little bit. And I've seen this many times before, as I talked about. So there you go, guys. Enjoy. Remember, top three rules of coding are reels, 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 which suggests low code, no code, AI-driven development. Um, you still have to know your fundamentals, but uh, it's shifting again. So I have somebody, for example, I had a, I have my bi-weekly mentoring meetings, and one of the guys in, this, in the meeting, he's learning to code. He was on the CSS3 course, and he was saying how um, he ran into a problem with some font, uh, some font testing. Anyway, I'll get into the details. So he went to AI. And he started working with AI, and then he had AI build something so that he could test things in real time. <clears throat> and he was amazed at how productive he was. He was amazed at how productive he was because of the AI. But he also understood, even at his early stages, he just he did HTML, and now he's doing CSS3. He, even at the early stages of his learning, he realized, even now, understanding the fundamentals of code, understanding the fundamentals of the web stack, understanding what clients are, servers are, how code is processed. He understood even then, even though AI is extremely powerful, he, he was voiced to himself, he said, if I did not know the fundamentals, I would have never been able to leverage the AI as he did. So encouragement, my friends, encouragement, much more to come. Listen, if you have any questions, you want any com topics you want to discuss with me, uh, I'm going to be doing a live probably later this week. Uh, put in the comments below what you would like me to discuss and have an interaction with. So give me a topic and I'll cover that topic in videos or in the live, or maybe both. And in the live, you can put questions to me with regards to that topic. So here's the opportunity. And there you go. Also, let me know if this crazy lighting, which is not professional, but it's real. Let me know what you think of it as well. All right. Cheers, guys. So if you're just learning how to code, one last thing before I end the video. Don't let the AI doom hype uh, put you down. I've been at this for decades, and I can tell you, I believe right now, this is the best opportunity in potentially ever for software developers to jump into it, but you just have to do the new stuff, as I was saying. Yeah, yeah. So if you're learning how to code, my advice to you is to do a little bit every day. And let me change it from code. Instead of saying learning how to code, let's change it to a more accurate term. When you're learning how to be a developer, which includes coding, one of the things you have to do is first thing every day, you want to write a bit of code. Why writing a bit of code? Because writing code is going to lead to comprehension. As you write more JavaScript, as you make mistakes, as you figure out why things are working and not working, um, more you write, the more neural connections you're going to make, literally neural connections in the brain, and once those connections are made, and you may be confused by a bunch of things for like weeks, and then one day you wake up and you go, ah, oh, now I understand. That's because the brain's making neural connections. Um, so yeah, you want to write a little bit of code every day. On the days you don't feel like doing it, just do 20 minutes. Just do 20 minutes. Oftentimes it will lead for, to longer, but just do 20 minutes. The, what you want to do is you want to stimulate the brain, just like building muscle. You want to stimulate the brain by daily exposure to the stuff. The more your brain sees coding every day and development every day, the more it's effort it will realize, your brain will realize, okay, this stuff is important. I got to put energy into learning this stuff. So yeah, uh, learn a little bit every day. Uh, write out code, type out code. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. Coding is, uh, and development is, is, is an error-prone process. That's why we are on Windows 11. And iOS, I don't know what is that, 24 now or whatever it is. Each of those new versions are, well, new features, but also a lot of bug fixes. Bugs are just software development errors. Developers making 
either coding errors or architectural errors. There's differences there. Anyway, so do a little bit every day. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. If, uh, if you don't get it right away, that's okay. Uh, just keep going. Oftentimes, especially when I wrote my first commercial applications, there were parts of the code base, there were parts and aspects of the software I didn't quite understand, but it worked. The most important thing is you get it to work. So yeah, do a little bit every day, write a bit of code every day. Don't get stuck in tutorial hell. Be sure to um, get into building projects right away. So once, for example, if you're doing the web stack, once you understand the, uh, the basics so you can build a responsive website, Go out there and find some small company or, uh, you know, some, um, what are we, we going to say, uh, startup or um, nonprofit. There we go. Find a nonprofit and help, offer to help them. It could be updating their WordPress site. It could be uh, making some small tweaks to their old website. It doesn't really matter. The first, the first two to three little projects but you do it shouldn't be looked at as money-making opportunities. In fact, you should, if you have to, do them for free. They're there to basically, they're the last stage of learning, right? When I was, I got this from combat sports. When I was, I didn't really learn how to fight until I stepped in the ring and I fought. I started fighting. Of course, the first opponents that you fight are not going to be like Mike Tyson or Conor McGregor or somebody. The first opponents are going to be opponents that you can manage. Same thing with the projects. Your first projects don't have to be full-blown software. As I said, they could be just updating somebody's WordPress site, you know, uh, updating one of the themes, installing something, uh, making slight adjust, uh, adjustments to their Wix site. It doesn't matter because a big part of development is executing on these things, has, and that has a lot to do with communication, understanding this, this, the scope of the technology stack. So, yeah. There's a lot out there. AI should be used as you learn, should be used in process, but you'll see quickly enough, once you start doing this stuff, you're going to see how AI is far from perfect, but it provides a lot of opportunities. That's why I was saying earlier that AI is presenting one of the greatest opportunities in history for noobs to software development, because it allows you to do a bunch of things that could never be done before which opens up a huge range of possibilities. It's huge. It's massive. All right. I'm Uncle Steph. Uh, check out the links below and uh, let me know what you think. If you have any questions, as I said earlier.